Oh, let's go. Cabbages. Ah, wrong thing. Hey, Sam, you're back. I heard you missed me. I was inconsolable. All right. So, quick review, because this is the last thing in the unit. The first thing we did, we remembered grade nine, which was... A linear equality with one variable. X plus 3 is less than 7. Less than or equal to 7. Previous to grade 9, what would this symbol have been? Previous to grade nine, would we have had a, an inequality there? It would have been an equal sign. And previous to grade nine, how many answers would that have had? One, because the answer would have had to be four, yes? In grade nine, you were taught that the answer was a whole bunch of numbers, an infinite amount of numbers, as a matter of fact, as long as that number, x, was less than or equal to 4. Right? And if I asked you to graph it, 4 colored line. Yeah? That was grade 9. In grade 11, we went one step further. We went to a linear... Oops, that should have said inequality. Sorry. Linear inequality. In grade 11, we went to a linear inequality with two variables. And that became x plus 3 was less than or equal to y. And that gave us a line. Right? And that line would have looked something like that. And that gave us all of these answers. Because every X and Y in there works there. Yeah? Then we moved to a quadratic inequality. With one variable, which was something like this, x squared um, minus 4 was less than or equal to, oh, not y, idiot head, 0, which of course gave us this, and those were our roots, right? And those roots are, of course, plus and minus 2. Now, when it was less than or equal to 0, that was right there. When it was x squared minus 4 was greater than or equal to 0, it was out there. But you will notice that much like the very first thing we started with, the answers were only on a number line, it is the same thing out here. Now, you're intelligent young people. When we added a second variable, we had to deal with two directions now. So we were no longer just looking at the x-axis. We had to look at both, and we had to do some shading. So obviously what is going to happen when we get to quadratic inequalities in two variables? We're going to be looking at the entirety of the coordinate grid, not just the x-axis. Everybody cool? But of course to do so, we need to be thoroughly comfortable with your friend and mine, plain old quadratics. So... There is our usual uh, axes. And to remind us all, 
we are going to start with the simplest of the parabolas, the first parabola we ever dealt with, the one that we used to kick off this entire section of math, good old-fashioned y equals x squared. And we're going to graph it. We know that 0 squared is 0. We know there is no a, a uh, value, so we know that we are going to go over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 2, up how far? And, and so on and so on. And it will give us this. Yeah? And we know that, right? Now, just like in, just like with a linear equality, what do we know about every single point on this parabola. If the point is on the parabola, what does it have? Every point on this parabola, how could you tell me where it is in the universe? Coordinates, excellent. Those coordinates are all what? X and Y. So if you pick any point on this parabola, for example, this point right here, 2, 4, that gives me an x and a y. What did I have in the parabola? x and y. So 2, 4, does 4 equal 2 squared? Yes. So what does that tell us about every single point on the parabola? Such as 4, 16. Yeah, but if I give you coordinates and I tell you they're on this parabola, what does that tell you? Thank you. They satisfy the equation, yes? So we've done three of them. We don't need to do a fourth. B is right here. What do you conclude about the points that lie on the parabola? They satisfy the equation. Now, what does satisfy mean to us in math? Because that's the math word. What does it actually mean? What are you saying to yourself? Because none of you are saying, they satisfy the equation. What are you saying? It works. When you do what? When you plug it in. Those are your people's words, right? What do I mean by that? The x, y coordinates... work in the equation when I plug them in. Right? Everyone agree? Okay. So now, let's look at C. You are quite plainly able to see that this line cuts the Cartesian plane, the coordinate grid, whatever you want to call it, into two areas, yes? All right. So I'm asking you, if it's got been cut, anytime you cut something into two, there's only two options, yes? Left, right, up, down, whatever. Well... This parabola has divided us into above and below the parabola. I'm going to highlight that word too. All right. So on this graph that you have right there, now you guys don't have the colors that I have, but you're going to imagine it. Where would you say is the region that is above the parabola? And this is kind of weird because the nomenclature seems odd. Pardon me? Outside the parabola, above the x-axis. So for Satjot, he is saying, uh, I need yellow outside the parabola, but above the x-axis. 
Would anybody like to, and I'm not saying that's right or wrong, would anybody like to take issue or suggest a different area? Or are we all happy? So this is my good friend Satjo. And I'm not putting him down. And Crystal, where do you think it would be? So Crystal thinks, and I'll use yellow, not a highlighter, oh, even though that comes out looking the same. Um, let's use my orange highlighter. Uh, it doesn't really look much like a highlighter, does it? And that is Crystal. Okay. Everyone cool? Two choices. Anybody want to go anywhere else? All right. So let's talk about which one of those might be right. What has been our method of checking the regions in the parabola? Or the regions that the Cartesian plane has been broken into. Manru? Test points. So let's take a test point from both, right? And see which one works because we want above the parabola right so one above and one below oh i'm sorry the first one we want is less than all right so first of all we have to decide if who's shaded this incorrectly right so how we do that man roops already said we're going to use a test point so i'm gonna pick this test point right here. What is that point? It's tough for you guys to see. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, five. Right? And Crystal's got the inside here, so she's got the uh, y axis, yeah? So we're just going to go whatever, uh, zero, three. Everybody okay with that? Okay, so we want one above and one below. Now, this question right here, in which of these regions do you think the solution set for this lies? Well, first we got to check something. We got to check what part haven't we shaded in at all? We've done nothing down here, yeah? Okay, so... Who do you think, orange or yellow, who do you think this part would belong to right now? Sat, Joe, or Crystal? Why? Because Crystal is saying that this parabola is doing the dividing, yes? So that must mean that all of this would be Sat, Joe, yeah? Everyone cool with that? Okay. So, the question I would like to ask is, this one right here, y is less than x squared. Do you think that lives in the orange or in the yellow? y is less than x squared. What is the x squared? Is that the parabola or is that the regions? Parabola. It's the parabola. Okay. And where are y values? Now where, where do I find y values? On the y-axis, yeah? Okay. So I want y values that are less than the parabola. Well, where are y values on the y-axis? And where is less on the y-axis? Down low, yeah? Everyone agrees? So where do you think this answer lies? Is it a sat jode answer or is it a crystal answer? You feel this will be in the sat jode section, right? So we have sat jode's point. It was 6, 5. Y is less than X squared is what we have to deal with. And we're going to take four points in that region. So you guys feel that this must be in Satjot's region. Yes? 
because so let's take four points from that region we have one six five let's write three more let's choose one from each quadrant let's take this one right here that is uh three negative two agreed and let's take this one out here uh negative four negative three and let's take one from this quadrant here Six, negative six, and five. Is everybody cool? Everyone agree? All right, so let's check. Y is less than X squared. So five is less than 36. Is that okay? All right. Negative two is less than nine. Is that okay? Negative 3 is less than 16. Is that okay? And lastly, 5 is less than 36. Is that okay? So all of these points work for Satcho, yes? Everyone agree? So, sir, we all thought that Sat Jot's region was where the solution lied, right? So Sat Jot was right. And how did we know we did test points? Correct? Now, when you read this, you say y is less than x, yes? Where do you find less than things? Above or below? Below. So go back to our original question here. Before you brought all the math to the party, you all said that the above region, Satchot said it was all this, yes? Because he felt originally that it was outside the parabola but above the x-axis. Agreed? All right. Was that the case? Because when we graphed y is less than x, we found that Satcho was right, yes? So would you not agree that the area Satcho described is not what's above the parabola, but it is what is below? Which means who was right for what's above, darn it. Come on, no whammies. I lost your ass, Crystal. I'm just crying. <laughs> now she's just cry. <laughs> Everybody understand? Above and below. It's just up and down. Right? Just like it was in one variable. When did the parabola go above? When it was up. So let me ask you this. I'm going to erase this blue and yellow. I'm going to put an orange parabola on here. Now, what would you say is above the parabola? And what would you say was below the parabola? So above and below is a little misleading, yes? What would be the word you would use? Inside and outside. They're both the same thing, just like satisfy an equation is works when I plug it in. Okay? Everybody cool? But, no, 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 we're going to leave it at that for now. All right, so everybody should be good, yeah? So we've shaded our region for y is less than x, yeah? And we shaded that Get rid of this orange one. Y is less than that. We shaded yellow. Y is less than X squared. So all of this is our less than. Right? Now, Y is greater than. Obviously, since the Cartesian plane has only been split into two, 
the only other place it could be is in here, yeah? And we checked that with 0, 3. Now, we checked it four times here. Do we need to check it four times here? Even if we did, it'd be super easy because all the X's would be what? 0. 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4. Is 1 greater than 0? Of course. Right? Is 2 greater than 0? Of course. Is 3 greater than 0? Of course. Is 4 greater than 0? Of course. So, did our table prove that we were right? Yes. Because what's our table made of? Because the table is test point. Everybody okay? And we've already shaded in the region. So, most of you are already wanting to say above equals inside the parabola and below equals outside the parabola. But that's dangerous because what happened when we turned it over? It's the opposite. Below was inside and above was outside. So be very careful with your above or your uh, inside and outside situation. All right. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, page 148. Why did we need the shaded regions? Remember, step five was y was less than x squared, and step eight was y was greater than x squared. Why did I need shaded regions? Sam? Because there's a whole area of the Right. All those x's and their corresponding y's work. We can't put an infinite amount of dots, so we shade because the solutions, and I'm going to put solutions in quotation mark because there's more than one, right? The solutions are infinite. It's not any specific point. Everybody cool? Right? Make a conjecture. A conjecture is a guess. How do you identify the solution region? How do you know the solution region? So how do we identify it? The question that I'm actually asking you practically is how do I know where to shade? How do you know where to do the shading, above or below? There's a way to guess. What's the guess? You just saw it twice. There's one hint. Go back a page and look. Less than, where did we shade? Pardon? Under, below. Greater than, where did we shade? Above. So is that a decent guess? So one way, one thing we could do is we could look at the inequality. If it's that or that, would I be shading above or below? Greater than. Greater than, above, if it was less than or less than equal to, where would it be? Below. That's one way you could look at it. Is that always going to work? It'll always work as long as it's written the right way. What do I mean by written the right way? How do you graph x is greater than 7? 
on the number line. How do I graph that from the ninth grade? We've done it this year as well. I put a point at 7. What do I do? Open dot, and then what? Arrow to which direction? Right. Everyone agree? Okay. How do I draw this? 7 is greater than x. Arrow to the left. Why? Yeah, it's reversed, right? So this can be a little misleading, correct? It's a great place to start, but if I've messed around with you and written the, the uh, inequality weirdly, you could get screwed up by that, yes? What is the guaranteed lock on how to identify where to shade? Right, test point. If one, if one test point works, then what do we do? What do we do with that test point's region? We shade. If it doesn't work, then what do we do? We shade which region? The other region. Just like when we were doing straight lines. Yes? Everybody cool? Okay, now, fine-tuning. Under what conditions would the graph of the function be part of the solution of the inequality? So let me ask you this. Why do I have two different words there? Y is less than or equal to x squared minus 4. And y equals x squared minus 4. Which of those is the function? The equals one. Okay. So in what conditions is this actual graph allowed to work with the inequality? Pardon me? That's this graph, yes? Okay. Henry? Right. That's what I need. I need that equal to. Right? So, under what conditions does the graph work? Only when it's less than or greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. So I must need a way, just like with the line, what is the way to know that this line isn't part of the solution? Preston asked about it yesterday, and I said he's just getting a little bit ahead of himself. What do we have to do? Break it up. If it was y is greater than x squared minus 4, then it would have to be dotted. Everybody cool? So there's only four options. Option 1, y is greater than or equal to x squared minus 4. Oops, shouldn't have done that. That gave it away. Dotted or solid line? Solid. And what is shaded? Above or below? Above. Option two, y is greater than x squared minus 4. What would that graph look like? Dotted. And what would be shaded? Above. Three. Y is less than or equal to x squared minus 4. What's that graph going to look like? Solid and 
below. And lastly, y is less than x squared minus 4. What's that one going to look like? Dotted. And where do I shade? Below. Now, what have you noticed about every single example I have given? Something has been the same. What are they all? Yeah. Okay. I'm more interested in what Satchot said. They're all x squared, yes? Which means what? It's a happy parabola. So what do I have to remember? If it's sad, something might be different. So do all of our rules apply? Maybe, maybe not. What can we use to make sure we're doing it right? Test points. So, but first, let's try an actual difficult one. So I've already given you the graph. It's hard to see, but this is all shaded. Everybody cool? So, I've already given you the graph. Here is the graph. Here is what this inequality graph says. In order to make this graph, though, I needed to do some stuff. What is the first thing I needed to do to make this graph? Because I've given you the graph. What did I have to do to make that graph? Pardon me? I had to find the roots. Okay. And then what? Once I knew the roots, what is what something else I would have needed to do? I would need to check the A value. Can I check the A value from the roots? What do I need before I can check the A value? Vertex. Did we care about the vertex before? Why not? Because there was only one variable, so we didn't care about Y, did we? Do we have two variables now? So is vertex important now? So I'm going to highlight that because that is new to us to care about, right? So once I know the vertex and the A value and the roots, what can I then do? It's an inequality, right? So I have to split the Cartesian plane, yes? Well, what must I do to split the Cartesian plane? Once I know the roots, the A value, and the vertex, what does that allow me to do? Draw what? Right. It allows me to draw the parabola. Now, you guys are smart young people. When it was a linear inequality, the line was the boundary line, yes? Well, the parabola is now the boundary line. Dotted, when it's greater than or less than. Solid, it's greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. And then what is the third thing I must do to complete a graph of an inequality? I must shade. How do I know where to shade? Shade after test points. Everybody good? That's all you got to do for these. So let's try it. We'll do the first one together. And then you'll go on your own. Now, what is the very first thing I have done to you to be a meanie? It's a negative A. Right? And it's in vertex form. Mr. Myers. So, step one is always our boundary line. And our boundary line, is it the inequality or the equality? How do I make the boundary line? I use the equality. Y equals negative 2, X minus 3 squared plus 1. I have a lot of ways I can graph that. If I hadn't been in pre-calc 11, could I do a table of values? 
Yes, but we've been in pre-calc 11. So what are we going to use? Because it's already in what form? Somebody already said it. Vertex form. So do we already know what the vertex is? What is it? Three. No. Three, one. So we're going to come over here. We'll put our vertex at one, two, three, one. Everybody happy? Do we know anything else about this parabola? We know the stretch value. A equals negative two. So that means if I move that way, X, where do I go? Down, because it's negative. How far? 2x squared, yes? So when I move right one, how far down? 2. When I move right 2, how far down? Which is it? Why is it 8? Because it's 2x squared. x squared is 4 times 2 is 8. And when I move over 3, how far down would I go? 18. But that's going to take me off my graph, yeah? So, do I almost have my boundary line? I've got my points. Now I just have to make a decision. Is my boundary line dotted or solid? Why dotted? Because of that. So I'm going to dot this line. Have I got my boundary line? Have I put it on the graph properly? Have I split the Cartesian plane into two regions? There is the region above. And there is the region below. Right? Now, technically, are they the same size? Think real hard about this. Yes, why? Because both go to infinity in both directions, right? We all understand that, yes? That's math theory. In reality, on our graph, on our piece of paper, which one is bigger? Above. Everybody cool? So in reality, above has more options. Everybody okay with that? How are we going to decide? Test point. What is the easiest test point to use if it's available? What? Zero, zero. So, y is less than negative 2, x minus 3 squared plus 1. What's going in? Zero and zero, correct? Zero is less than negative 2 times zero minus 3 squared plus 1. What is 0 minus 3? What is negative 3 squared? 9. What is 9 times negative 2? Negative 18. What is negative 18 plus 1? Is this true? No. No. So is zero, zero allowed to have any shading over it? No. So where do I shade? And that follows, right? Less than below. Everybody cool? Okay. You try this one.
Yep, see you later. Everybody good? What's the answer? Where is the shading? Above, and since it's a happy parabola, is that inside or outside? Inside, excellent. Is 2, 1 part of the solution? No. And that would be why. Is everybody good? Everybody? Yeah, yeah? 2-1 was hard to tell from looking, wasn't it? Because it was really close to the line. Yeah? Okay, let's do a happy one now. So, step one is the same. What is step one always? Boundary line. But now we have some options, don't we? What are our options for graphing the boundary line? I can think of four. One is a table of values. Are we going to do that? No. So what else can we do? I could find the roots. What are my options to find the roots? I could factor or quadratic formula. So there's two options to start my graphing. I could find the roots. Do I have a third option? Complete the square because that will get me into vertex form. Do I have a fourth option? Negative b over 2a and sub back in. Actually, now I've got a fifth option. If you know the roots, halfway between is here. So five options right now. Who chooses their option? You do. Right? Go. Or is this one? Oh, this is one we should work together, I guess, hey? So I'll take a vote. Five options. Somebody throw out a decision. Manru. You want to use the quadratic formula? Of course you do. Why wouldn't you? The hardest one, the biggest pain in the ass. Why would you choose quadratic formula? 
No, why, why is quadratic formula a good choice? Whoa, whoa, whoa. All at once. Somebody, one person. It always works. Right? Is it picky? Is it easy to make a small error? Are you going to screw it up by not checking your work? Oh, yeah, you are. So if you can use something that's easy and less picky, shouldn't you do that? So what should you check for first? Should you not check every other method? This one factors, doesn't it? Right? But for you can all factor it if you want. I'm going to do what Mamroop said. I'm going to do the quadratic formula. So there are my roots, 5 and negative 1. Where is the vertex automatically? Halfway between them. My vertex x equals 5 plus negative 1 divided by 2, which is 4 over 2, which is 2. Now from my vertex x, I go back up here. My vertex y equals 2 squared minus 4 times 2 minus 5 is 4 minus 8 minus 5, which is negative 9. So my vertex is at 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9. Yeah? Everyone agree? It's a lot of work, but we're there. Yes? Does it have a stretch factor? No. So 1 and 1, 2 and 4, and dotted or solid? Solid. Greater than. What's our guess for shading? Above, which would be in this case inside, yes? Easiest checkpoint? Zero, zero. So the X's drop out. Is zero greater than or equal to negative five? So we are good to go. Right? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Right, Manru? How many people factored? How many people completed the square? Thank you. Why do you guys hate completing the square so much? What did it ever do to you? Did it spit in your cereal or something? Okay, your turn. Totally by yourself. I'm not going to help at all. Yes, Sahoda. Yes. I know, I forgot, and you weren't here. I know, it's sitting right here. I'm going to put up a double one today. Jacob taught his method in the other class, and it, it, it was very well done. Huh? All right. Yeah. How did you figure out the A here? There's no A. So the A is one. Yeah, okay. okay.
Are we good? You say when, and I will hit the AV mute button, and it will be back on the screen. You're really good? If I walk back there, I'll see a nicely drawn parabola with shading and everything? No. Who's ready? Ta-da! Who did it right? I bet everybody did it right. Right? I know you did. I just bet everybody did it right. I did what you all hated was completing the square, of course. Any questions? It's nothing new, right? It's just a mix of grade nine with the line and the inequalities and then grade 11 parabola graphing, right? Now, of course, you had other options there, right? Right? You had other options for solving that but they were up to you. Okay. Okay. So you've all seen sporting events. You've all seen and you've all heard stuff on the screen from sporting events, yes? Even though you are not there. Right? This is how it works. You all know how to record music. You need a microphone, yeah? Ba ba. Got it. Right? Now, if I go stand back there, way back there, will this microphone pick me up very well? No, of course not. Just like from way back there, if I start whispering like this, Sam can't hear me. Huh? Yes, I can. Right. <laughs> Who just said yes, they can? Aaron? What did you say? What did I say? What did I say? I said, Sam can't hear me very well, right? And yes, you were right too, Sam, because you said, what? So yes, you too were right. But what, can you, what, what does every old person do when they can't hear you? Huh? And then what do they do? There you go, Zach, show us again. Hey! Why? What does this do? doesn't amplify anything. No, it's not a symbol. It does funnel the sound. Why do you think your ear is shaped this way? This creates a parabola. And the sound waves... The sound waves go straight in. And then this focuses those sound waves in on your ear. That's why they work. That's why all those old hearing aids were those trumpet things that people put up there. You've seen them in cartoons, right? Nobody uses them anymore. I think it's wicked. I think we should bring them back. I think it'd be so awesome. You're ordering something McDonald's and the kid there's like, so can I? What? And you reach back behind you and you pull out your ear trumpet to listen to them. It'll be so wicked. Cheaper than hearing aids too. Anyway, so... Microphone, yeah? Right? Everybody cool with that? Now, in order to make a microphone work better, they put it in a parabola. 
You've seen pictures of it. The dude standing there. They got that big plastic thing in front of them. It's not a shield from the rain. It's a parabola. You've never seen this? Okay, hold up. Zero, zero. Do I know any points? What are they? 25 and 15. Right? Okay. So what's vertex form? Right? Okay. So what's my y value right now? 15. Do I know my a value? Do I know my x value? What is it? 25. Do I know my vertex value? What is it? Squared. Plus, what's my other vertex value? So this is really 15 equals 625a, right? How do we solve that? 15 over 625 equals a. Tidy that up. 5 goes into that thrice, and into that 125 equals a. Now what? What's my algebraic one? Right? Now, I need stuff where? Inside or outside that parabola? Inside, so that would be above. So if I want to know if it's going to work, and uh, Crystal is, uh, say she's 100 centimeters, well, she's more, she's like 200 centimeters away from me, right? So what's the X value going to be? Crystal is 200 centimeters away from me right now, right? So I am the origin. Crystal is 200. So how would I use this to know if my microphone will work on Crystal right now? I'd plug in 200. 200 squared is... 40,000. Right, 40,000. 40,000 times 3 is... 120,000, yes? Divided by 125 is about 1,000, yeah? Okay, 960, right? So Crystal right now is 200 away from me this way. How far is she away this way? Does it look like very much? Is she 960 centimeters away from me? So would my microphone work on Crystal right now? No. Because it would be outside the circle, right? Everybody good? Everybody cool? Okay. Let's try another one. This printed very weirdly. Please cross that out. This should say mass is less than or equal to 1450 D squared. But well, when you read the whole thing, you see that when I'm rock climbing, this is how they decide on the rope. If the mass I need to support, my mass must be less than or equal to this diameter of rope. Okay, now why would that matter in real life? I'm climbing up rocks. Can I take, do I want to take as little or as much as possible, as little. So I am looking for boundaries to stay where? Above or below that boundary? Below, because I want my diameter, my rope, to be as small as possible, yes? So graphing, this is super easy, isn't it? If I have no mass to carry, how big a rope do I need? None. Zero, zero. Right? If I have a diameter of one, how much mass can I carry? 1450, right? Because 
I moved over one, I have an A value of 1450. So one, 1450. Two would be two squared is four times 1450 is 5,800. Now, in reality, do I need this part? Why not? Exactly. I, I, I want a negative diameter rope. I want a rope so small it's smaller than zero. So I only care about out here, yes? Now, where do I want to be? Do I want to be in the blue or do I want to be in the pink? Why do I want to be in the pink? Because I have to be below this threshold of mass, don't I? So, wherever I go out here, as long as I'm below the Y, I'm okay. Everybody understand? Does everybody understand that? Is everybody cool? Okay, now how would we do this algebraically? I'm climbing a mountain. I weigh 207 pounds. How do I find out what size rope I need? I put my mass in for what? Hmm? In for M, right? Okay. So then what would I do? I would do the algebra, yes? Now, what is wrong with what I just said? If I put in my mass, what will this algebraically yield to me? What will it give me? Diameter of the rope I need, yeah? Everybody understands? Everyone agrees? Now, let's think for a second. What is, what is there going to be more options for? Diameter of rope or mass of people? It's going to be way more masses of people, yes? Like, I can't go to the store and say, I need one more millimeter of diameter on this rope, please. Can I? I've got certain values in reality that I have to deal with. Agreed? What do you think would be the fractions they would break a diameter down into? What do you think? I'm not asking you for the right answer. I'm asking you what you think. Could I get a rope that is one, it's in inches, yes? One sixty-fourth of an inch thicker than this rope right beside me. That's a pretty small fraction. So what do you think they would use? Halves? Okay. So now, is it mass that's important or is it the diameter of the rope? I'm at the rock climbing store. They've got quarter inch thick rope, half inch thick rope, three quarter inch thick rope, one inch thick rope. What do I do? I'm looking at the four ropes in front of me. Which one do I need to buy? I'm climbing up a mountain. Do I want the biggest rope I can get? Why not? Pardon me? It'll be heavy. Do I want the skinniest rope I can get? Why not? Because it might snap when I fall off the mountain. So what do I do with those diameters? You've already done it once. You, what do I do? You plug it in, right? But you can't plug in your mass. You've got to plug in the diameter, Right? <laughs> So, I got a half-inch rope. What do I do? Right? What's 0.5 squared? What's 14.50 times 0.25? Where's your calculator? Somebody can do that. Or, of course, 40 and 50 divided by 4. 
What is it? 362.5 pounds. Is my mass less than that? I told you I was 207. So could I use a half inch rope? I could. Do I want to take the smallest or the biggest rope I can get my hands on? Smallest. So I might want to go down to a quarter, right? So then it would be mass less than or equal to 1450 times 0.25 squared, right? Well, 0.25 squared is 0.0625 times 1450. Can I use a quarter inch rope? Somebody check it. What? 90 pounds? Do I want that quarter inch rope? No. Better not. Right? But first of all, of course, I just like to watch people rock climb. I'll, I'll, I'll take the, the tram. Right? Like, I just, I, I don't need any rope. People that have this shape don't do a lot of rock climbing. What's 0. 0.25 times 0. 0.25? Okay. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I screwed up in printing your... Oh, key ideas. Damn it. Ah, we're almost out of time. What's the same? What's the same as everything we've done? What did we need to find first? Boundary line. That's a key idea. Boundary line. Two. What, a key, what do we have to remember at the boundary line? Dotted. For greater than or less than, solid for equal to. Third key point, above or below. Above is greater than or greater than and equal to. Below is less than, less than or less than and equal to. Remember, don't think inside outside because in a negative parabola, it's the other way around, right? Think above and below. And those are the key ideas. Now, very quickly, this got weird when I printed it. I printed the first page of work with answers, then the second page of work, but then I put the answers on their own page. So this looks like you're supposed to do some sort of work with page 155. No, page 155 is answers. And then, same thing happened on page one. 58, page 158 is answers. So your work is 154, 153, 54, 55. No, see, I'm screwing it up. 153, 154, 156. And 157. And then the rest is answers. Then you will notice the next thing we have is a review. We will do, we will attack that review over the course of the next two days. Because I didn't give you a quiz. Right? What? Oh, that's something else. <laughs>